Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy entrepreneurs, professionals, and business owners publish to grow their businesses and to leave a legacy. We're doing a series of spotlights on remarkable experts across the country and in your town. Joining me on this segment is Devin Leary. He's the founder of Leary Studios, a video production company. Devin, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Devin, tell us a little bit about Leary Studios and the types of folks that you specifically help. Oh, so um, what Leary Studios is, is we're a video production company that really doesn't just special in making awesome looking videos. We like to take that marketing approach and that marketing side because that's where it really matters because that's where the client's gonna get the most results, uh, not just cool looking videos. Um, and then some of the type of clients that we work with, uh, right now I'm do, helping a local brewery um, and then David Breyer, which uh, has a book. He's very well known in the, in the branding world and uh, right now we're, we're also helping a um, photography company and we're partnering, partnering with them and we're trying to get photos and videos of every bridge crossing the Mississippi. And we're going to make a lot of documentaries and books about it. That's fascinating. So you work with a variety, it sounds like, of types yeah. of clients uh, from a brewery on or, and different kinds. Is there a, uh, how did they find you? Because they're coming from different types of places. How did you make these initial connections with these companies? Yeah, so um, it kind of started with college. Uh, some of the professors really knew a lot of people. And then they were looking, some people came to the university looking for students. But all the students didn't know the things that I knew, like Final Cut, where everybody learns Premiere Pro. I don't like that. It, it sucks. Anyways, <laughs> so, so we, we started really getting into it. And, and I started meeting people out there. And then they knew other people. And it just kind of branched out that way. Have you uh, considered like a specialty or a niche that you want to serve? Do you like the breweries or are you planning on going down one path with Leary Studios or what types of clients are, are you looking to uh, acquire the most? I think we're going to go more for businesses. I'd even mentioned that we do a lot of weddings. We do like a lot of weddings. Oh, right except on for, events, live yeah. events. Except for COVID. COVID's kind of taken a little pin into that, but um I like to do more businesses and, and more ones kind of surrounding the Minneapolis area, especially now. Got it. So you mentioned the marketing approach. What is different? Like, what have you noticed, um, you know, people are doing maybe mis mistakenly doing that, you know, that using a more of a marketing approach is, is going to be better for their videos. Tell me a little bit. Yeah. So, so a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to create an awesome a video production company and there's tons of them that are coming out now because the equipment's getting so much cheaper but at the same time you're gonna have to buy a lot so what i've noticed and what i love saying is everybody be leery of our competition because <laughs> because a lot of them think that because they have all that equipment means that they have the skill and they don't have the skill some of them do, some of them don't. But I've seen a lot of videos where it might, they think that it looks awesome and the client goes, not really. Or, or they post it and it goes, it didn't do very well. See, it's, it's a lot more than just a cool looking video. You have to really figure out how to make that cool video seen. Otherwise, you know, you can work as, as much as you want and have this big budget. And if people don't see it, it's not worth it. Yeah, that's that's terrific. And it, it reminds me when I had my DJ company uh, and people would ask me, well, can't anybody be a DJ? I used to my answer always used to be, hey, listen, I could buy a stethoscope, but would that make me a doctor? <laughs> so yeah, like exactly. to, to your point. Um, so tell me, what are some of the uh, like you, you meant we mentioned a big myth or misconception. People think that, you know, anybody can shoot a video. Um, what are some like pitfalls or mistakes that you see people make with their business videos? that maybe not give them the best result? What, what mistakes do you see out there? Hmm. So the biggest one that I see is, is they, they just spend a lot of money on equipment and then it, it, doesn't, it doesn't give them what they think they wanted. Um, what, what, clients, what clients get, and I've been seeing it from other people and then they come to me, is, is that they don't really know what the client really wants or they they like to think they know what they want and then they go out and do whatever they 
they want and then they give it to the client they're like this is not what we asked at all you know so oh almost like they gave them what their vision was but they never asked the client what the client's exactly, vision might be exactly that makes sense or, or another thing is they like to think oh you know another pro video production company did this video and they got a lot of attention if we do the same thing it'll get a lot of attention it does not work like that mm -hmm. like um that fpv drone footage of that bowling alley oh i saw that video I, that was cool that was really cool and then everybody was like i'm gonna get fpv drones because dgi just came out with theirs and and everybody's like oh you know I, let me help you do this and do that but it's not going to get anywhere close to as much attention as that one did and i do see in five years that a lot of videos are going to be with those fpv drones and it's going to be kind of like the norm it's like oh there's another one just kind of like the Blair Witch Project. It's a trendy fad, like the, the style of movie was cool for a while, but then it's like, oh, another one of those, right? And so yeah, it starts exactly. to lose its luster. It, it does. As a fellow gearhead myself, I, I, do you find that when people invest so much in equipment, it, is the disconnect because either um, um, the, it's not the equipment that's, that's creating the output, or have you seen people like not know how to use the equipment or a little bit of both, you know, to where it doesn't even give the output that they're looking for? Well, I mean, you, you need to know the knowledge of what to do with that equipment. I think uh, like the biggest thing that I see is all these YouTubers saying, oh, it's not about equipment. You don't have to buy a whole lot of equipment. It comes with your skills. And that's a hundred percent true. But then everybody sees the stuff that you're, they're using. And it's a, just a bunch of equipment. So it's like, they think, oh, you know, you're being kind of hypocritical, but they're not, they know how to use it. Exactly, because like there's power users of anything. If somebody really knows how to use a really, you know, your, your cell phone camera, but if they're a pro at it, you could get the most uh, out yeah. of that piece of equipment. It's really about the knowledge of that equipment and don't bother buying a whole bunch unless you really plan on learning how to use it. Exactly. So Devin, tell, tell me, like you mentioned college, what inspired you to start a video production company? Like, uh, how'd you get started? So I, I always wanted to do it. I mean, even when I was in high school, so I, I really, I really wanted to try it. And then, so I, I actually tried doing the kind of like this marketing thing and I made a bunch of social media content when I was in high school. And then I kind of stopped when I went to college and, but I learned a lot from that. And then when I was in college, I always knew I wanted to do video and I kept, I kept going and doing the video. And then we got these wedding clients that started coming in. And then it's like, you know, I might as well just slap a name on this because I, I'm getting clients left and right now, thankfully until COVID hit for weddings. But I was like, it's time to time to put a name on it and, and make it official. So I, I decided to do that during the pandemic. Did you actually advertise for wedding clients or, or did word on the street just spread and people were telling people to call you? Yeah, that, 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 was, a, that was pretty much what was happening. And then what, what I love about weddings is, well, one, I, I used to like this about weddings and then I figured out that's not true. But one of my <laughs> photographer friends said that, oh, well, everybody's gonna get mar married. <laughs> like there's, I was like, yeah, that's right. And then, and then COVID hit, but, um, and then second, wow, well, geez, what else was I going to say? Oh, I think about I the wedding, about the wedding business. I, I came from that business, like doing the entertainment from it and there, there's pros. Hey, there's no such thing as a perfect business. There's pros yeah, and cons yeah. to everything out there. Uh, but there are definitely some huge challenges when it comes to live events. The nice thing about live events, like weddings and that, uh, is the fact that the the talent is already there. The 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 atmosphere is already there. You're just ca getting to capture it. You don't have to create it, you see? And yeah. the enter the interesting thing about it as the entertainer, I was like, "Oh my gosh, I I rather I actually it was like a I wanted to trade positions with the videographer myself <laughs> because I used to say, "Dude, I actually, I'm out here busting my butt. I got to create this, uh, these memories, you know, mm -hmm. by doing the dances and announcing, making people scream and dance and do all that. And the videographer guy was always super jealous of because he just gets to capture it. And he would look at me like, 
what's next, Mark? <laughs> you know? oh, really? And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm going to trade positions with you. <laughs> but like you said, hey, COVID hits and then live events take a hit. But who saw that coming? Totally novel, novel time. Really? Really? But when that starts to come back, do you want to, you want to keep the wedding clients coming in? Um, for now. I mean, right now I see that as, as a way to build us up even more. Yeah. Um, what I love about it is, is referrals are so easy with weddings. So like I, I, I get, I become friends with the next photographer. They start talking about me to their clients. And then that happens to all their clients and then all the wedding parties, you know, that what I do, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Isn't that great? That's so great. Cause you've got a captive audience there and they're already experiencing what you do and they can meet you in person. And it's like uh, the no like trust factors there. And they obviously trust you because you're, Hey, you showed up and you're here. So I'm going to call him because <laughs> I know he'll exactly. do the, get the job done. So Devin, for folks listening right now, uh, that de- can use your, your help with a video for their business or a live event when the events start coming back, how do they find you and connect with you and learn more? Oh, so there's two websites up right now, my personal and then the Leary Studios one. So that would be www.devinleary.com or www.learystudios.com. And then uh, my phone number is just 608-387-2328. Devin, this has been terrific. I appreciate you taking the time uh, and sharing with my audience today. I wish you continued success with Leary Studios and for all of your clients. Oh, thank you so much. Devin Leary, founder of Leary Studios, a video production company. This segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy entrepreneurs, professionals, and business owners publish to grow their businesses and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for tuning in.